Last week, I took a look at a doctor who should probably lose her medical license for giving out really crazy, unscientific advice about COVID-19. This week, I'm going to do it again. And this doctor's name is Paul Thomas, an anti-vaccine pediatrician. That's right. He's a doctor who treats children and is anti-vaccine. He also has a YouTube channel that has hundreds of thousands of followers. I wonder what he has to say about COVID-19. I'm Dr. Wilson. Welcome to Debunk the Funk, and let's get right into this funky stuff. Piecing together what's happening in real life and comparing it to what you hear in the news, and then in my case, I'm also reading the literature, and there's a disconnect at times. So far, I agree. The media already isn't very good at accurately reporting complicated science. But as we'll see, there's also a disconnect between the science and our friend Dr. Thomas here. COVID-19 can be a serious infection, and we've lost many lives. So if that's been your loved one's experience, you know, my heart goes out to you. And of course, we all mourn the loss of any life. And these lives, the, the battle against COVID when it gets you in that way, and it's in, in your lungs, like my friend Bud who had it and almost died, it's a battle. So it's no joke. So, wow. I'm glad we can agree that this is a very serious virus. Why am I debunking this guy again? So if you get SARS, CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, what's the chance you're going to die? The initial reports were coming out at 3%, 3.6%, as high as 5% in some places. It is now known that it's about, at most, 0.2%. 0.2%. Oh, right. Yeah, that's why. This is so wrong, and I don't know where people are getting this idea that the death rate is that low. You can calculate this yourself by looking at the live numbers that are updated every single day. When we do that for the most up-to-date numbers on today, which is August 1st, we get a case fatality rate of 3.34%, not 0.2%. So that's the case fatality rate right now. I don't know why Dr. Paul can't do this simple math himself, but What's even weirder to me is that he's saying that we know that the death rate is 0.2%. We don't know the death rate. We only know the case fatality rate right now. And it's going to change as the pandemic goes on. We don't know what the real death rate of COVID-19 is, and we won't know for a while. So given the case fatality rate today in the United States of about 0.2, What are we doing completely locking down society and once again leaving kids unattended at home, not going to school, those who need the school lunch program are not going to have their school lunch program. Yeah, it sucks that there will be drawbacks of closing schools, but we got here because people refuse to take this virus seriously and it's going to get worse if we continue to do so. It's like, we need a different solution. I actually have a thought. Really? Let's hear it. And obviously I'm not in charge. Good. So look at this. As the states, especially the southern and the western states in the United States have opened up, we're seeing increased numbers. Most states are seeing increased numbers, not all. It's interesting to me, and I think it's totally explainable, that those states that had massive numbers of COVID, so take New York, New York City. That was the epicenter of this outbreak for the United States. They have the highest rate of positive kids, or patients rather, people. They have the highest rate of deaths. They had the subway. They had, you know, crowded conditions. A perfect storm for COVID to just take hold. And they went up like typical and then back down. Yeah. Their cases went down because they locked down. Because lockdowns are what help us get the virus under control at this point. I really hope he's not going where I think he's going with this. And so far, it remains to be seen, but so far they are not having the massive increases that we're seeing in many parts of the country that are opening up. Well, why would they? New York City has not opened back up like the states that are seeing massive increases have. New York City still has a lot of restrictions, and rightly so. 
If that holds, folks, and this is what I want to watch and we'll see what happens in the next month, but if we don't get a massive rise, this second huge peak filling the hospitals again, if that doesn't happen in New York, that's important information. It really sounds like he's going exactly where I was hoping he wasn't. If you've got 70, 80% uninfected and you open up, they should just have a massive recurrence of infections. If it doesn't happen, then it means that you can develop immunity in your community by having this illness go through the community. Yep, once again, on this channel, we have a doctor who is advocating for people to get sick. Insanity. When you know that kids don't die from this, oh sure, there's case reports of an occasional death and I'm not trying to minimize the suffering of anyone who dies. But you are, you're doing exactly that. By advocating for this disease to sweep through communities, in fact, you are advocating for more deaths. Dr. Paul Thomas, you should lose your medical license. But for the most part, it is harmless to children. Children are not dying. Young adults who are healthy are not dying. Yes, there's case reports, but for the most part, they are fine. Also inaccurate. There are not just two options with this disease of either you live or you die. First of all, you could pass this disease to somebody else unknowingly because transmission of this disease is thought to primarily happen before you develop symptoms. So you may never even know that you contributed to someone else's illness and possible death. Second, there is growing evidence that even healthy people with mild cases of COVID end up with symptoms that are debilitating that last months after their diagnosis. It is not just a simple matter of you catch it, you pass it, and you're fine. This virus can lead permanent damage in your body. Open up the schools, let kids go to school all the way through K-12, no masks, let them get this illness. So not only is he pro-disease, he's anti-mask. Shocker. And then, within a few months, we could completely open up society and be done with this thing. So just to be clear, his master plan here is to let about 70 or 90% of the population get COVID-19 so that everybody can have herd immunity. That means a lot of people are going to die. How many people exactly? Well, if we go by the predicted death rate for COVID, which people think might be around 1%, that means we lose at least 900,000 more American lives before we achieve herd immunity. And even then, it's not guaranteed to go away. Take for instance, measles the most infectious respiratory virus that we know of. It infects most of the population when there is no vaccine. And yet, it never went away until there was a vaccine. Outbreaks would just pop up in two to three year intervals as the new susceptible population would be born into the population. We can still see this trend in unvaccinated populations around the world. That sounds bold, that sounds crazy. They've done it in Sweden. No, Sweden did not just let everybody get the virus. They did close high schools and universities for a while, and people took the virus seriously and followed social distancing rules. So no, I wouldn't call your plan bold and crazy. Just crazy. So we've got to look at all the data and think logically and be smart about this. Hmm, maybe take your own advice there. I guess take home message, I'm a pediatrician, if I'm talking to you as a parent and you don't have a child who has major underlying conditions, don't worry about this illness. COVID-19 thanks you for your service, Dr. Thomas. Good job. Well, I think we have thoroughly dumpstered another doctor who plays for Team COVID. I honestly don't know how he made it through medical school. That's going to do it for this video. The links to all the information I used here are available in the description so you can check it out yourself. Until next time, this has been Debunk the Funk, I'm Dr. Wilson, and join me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.